speaking. My name is Anna Sands, and today I will be recruiting and reading the claim made by Josie Desser that grade inflation is a bad method of teaching at four year universities. The advocate supported this claim with two secondary claims. The first being that grade inflation has not shown an increase in students' academic competency, and the second being that grade inflation decreases the quality of education a person receives. My response to her primary claim is that claiming that grade inflation is a bad method is actually a claim of value and relies heavily on the assumption that grade inflation is a nationwide issue that adversely affects most, if not all, of the American undergraduate student body. In response to her first claim that grade inflation has not shown an increase in students' academic competency, I will address um, her first support for this claim, being that students demonstrate no significant improvement in a range of cognitive skills, um, and that this lack of improvement does not match the rising grades. However, the advocate only gave um, evidence from one source in this respect, and this was insufficient evidence to prove that grade inflation is even a nationwide issue. Uh, if further research is done, it's found that there are various articles that dispute this concept at its core. Grade inflation is a hot topic in academic media and a popular one for teachers to worry over. However, the portrayal of grade inflation is a skewed one that does not accurately represent the state of the total population. In the Social Worlds of Higher Education Handbook for Teachers in a New Century, um, it is stated that media reports of grade inflation have focused on elite schools. The evidence of grade inflation at public universities and non-elite private colleges, however, is much more suspect. Um, this is shown in a National Center of Education Statistics study, which um, found that over the past two decades, the main grade point average for all college students who earned bachelor's degrees actually declined from a 2.98 to a 2.89. This is demonstrative of an actual decline in overall GPA, which is the opposite of grade inflation. So this um, underscores the point that um, a lack of cognitive development doesn't uh, match with the grade inflation. The second point that um, the advocate brought up to show that grade inflation um, does not increase a student's academic competency was that uh, it has led to more uh, students spending their time drinking than studying. However, this is a generalization and does not show cause and effect. Uh, the research that uh, proved the further drinking was really just a statistic stating that more college students drink today than they used to, but there is no direct correlation between this drinking and inflated grades. In fact, various studies show other reasons for increased student drinking, including um, including social reasons uh, such as um, lost the paper. Um, basically. There are social reasons for increased drinking in college, and it's actually easier to access alcohol now as um, fake IDs are much more common. Um, various reasons for higher grades exist outside of grade inflation, none of which were addressed by the applicant in her, in her um, proposition and its support. Um, one of the most one of the most prevalent changes in undergraduate um, students has been the demographic shift. Since grade inflation became an acknowledged issue, there have been significantly more females in the undergraduate student body. In a 2015 census done by the U.S. Census Bureau, it was found that um, for the first time since the Census Bureau began collecting data on higher education attainment, women are actually more likely to have a bachelor's degree than men. Um, and in a study done by, organ by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, it was found that girls are more likely to succeed in school. This shows that there are other possible reasons for higher national grades, such as the change in demographics that leads to a more dedicated student body. In response to the advocate's second um, supporting claim that grade, inflation, uh, that grade inflation decreases the quality of education a person receives, I will say that um, 
This statement relies heavily on the assumption that the quality of education one receives revolves around a rigorous grading system. According to Alfie Kahn, author of The Homework Myth, the quality of learning <coughs> declines when grades are introduced, becoming shallower and more superficial when the point is to get a grade. The stress of reaching for a high grade draws the student's attention away from the course material they should be absorbing. The possibility of low grades is what decreases the long-term quality of the student's education. The advocate stated that teachers have been buying better evaluations by offering curves and dropping low test grades, but this does not inevitably lead to a lower quality education. The goal of education is to become educated. The meter on which a student is measured may vary despite a lack of change in the student's actual learning. According to Chris Crouch, an educator of 14 years and an, and an instructional coach, in a grade central learning environment, students feel pressured to cut corners, sacrifice ethics, and take easier courses, all in an effort to achieve better grades instead of better learning. In conclusion, the statement grade inflation is a bad method at four-year universities is a value claim heavily reliant on disputable points. Grade inflation is an affliction that is widely discussed as an issue that affects the majority of academic populations, but the examples used to demonstrate this are almost exclusively elite universities such as Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, which make up a small percentage of the actual academic population. The quality of an education does not revolve around a rigorous grading system. It relies upon a teacher's ability to impart meaningful and lasting knowledge regardless of the grades they distribute. Thank you. Beaten up on that grade inflation speech today. That's the second one, huh? Okay. Uh, I, I think you uh, start off by an explanation that the, you think that there's a false premise based here that uh, uh, the value of the grades is uh, is determined by you know the difficulty of getting them and uh, the assumption that this is all widespread. I like the argument that you had on it being widespread where you suggested that it's really only elite universities that have these kinds of issues. Uh, you had good statistical information that showed that the average grade at a variety of schools has actually declined in the last few years. Uh, I did think that you also had an interesting argument here on the demographics. Uh, suggesting that because we've had more women in college and uh, they've been more successful that that really accounts for whatever great inflation there is. Uh, I, I do think there's some presuppositions built into that but the explanation is is pretty good and it does suggest that there are a variety of issues that have to do with why people get grades or why people are doing well in school or the grades have changed that have nothing to do with the concept of grade inflation as described by uh, the advocate. Um, the challenge on reasoning uh, uh, causality on the drinking issue, uh, you got a little sidetracked there because you got lost with some of your information. Uh, you basically you know, asserted a couple of points at social pressure or easy access and fake ideas that make that easier. Uh, it would be nice if you had some evidence to go along with that. Uh, I think there are probably lots of reasons that people drink, but the notion that they don't have to worry about their grades is a, is a motivation. That's, a, that's an iffy one to begin with, and it seems like that's a reasonable press to have, although I think you could use something uh, more. On the second point, uh, we're back to the same issue, that the idea that people are focusing on grades um, construes that the grades related to quality in some way, and that the advocates presuppose that uh, if, the grade, if grade inflation exists, that the quality has to have gone down as opposed to learning. And it would be nice if you had some evidence that suggested learning has continued to increase, regardless of what the grades are one way or the other. I think you've got the right premise arguing here, but you don't have the right evidence to make that conclusion. All right, thank you.